Hey guys, what is up and welcome to the channel for today's video and in today's video we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys how to do a DIY dirt bike tune up so we never have to take your dirt bike back to the shop again. You're going to want to learn how to do a DIY tune up so you never have to count on someone at the shop tuning up your bike. You don't have to wait on them for when they got time available at the shop. You don't got to spend your money doing it. You can spend your money on parts or on gas. You can go out and rip on the trails. I'm going to show you guys how to do it yourself. So the first thing we're going to talk about is air filters. Now it's important to keep your air filter clean because when it is dirty, it's going to get clogged up and it's going to make your bike run rich and that's actually going to make your bike run like garbage and it's not going to perform very well and if you're pulling debris in through the filter you're going to be sucking that into your carb and possibly into the combustion chamber which can cause some internal damage so to clean our air filter we're going to remove it thoroughly wash it out with some degreaser type of soap which will help with the old dirty air filter oil we applied from last time once clean, we're gonna let that thing dry and we're gonna reapply our coat of our air filter oil. Now, if you guys are curious, all the products we're talking about, they'll be all linked down in the description box below. So you can go ahead and find any of the products we're talking about. They'll all be labeled. You should be easily be able to find them, click them, purchase them, have them shipped directly to your door. So the second thing you're gonna wanna go ahead and do when we're doing our tune-up is changing your engine oil. Now it's important to keep fresh oil in your bike if you want it to keep running like it was on day one when it came from the factory. These are not car engines. They're being used and abused on the track, being revved high all the time, and these bikes are working really hard with a high compression ratio. So it's important we keep fresh oil in the dirt bike. Lacking changing your oil frequently will cause engine overheating which will make it work harder you can have a stiff gear shifter it can cause some engine noise it can have a loss of performance there'll be a decrease and contamination of total oil in the engine and transmission casing which will lead to some serious issues like premature clutch wear increased friction on the piston rings damaging the engine cylinder bore and ultimately creating engine failure so what I like to do is every six to ten hours is I like to change my engine oil now if you don't have an engine hour meter on your dirt bike like this I highly suggest you guys go ahead and pick one of those up they're like 20 bucks off Amazon once again link down below and you guys can pick one of those up it's like an absolute must if you don't have one on your bike already now when we're removing the drain bolt carefully remove it and look at the end of the drain bolt you're going to want to see if there's any metal shards on the top of the bolt now brown or copper looking flakes are going to be an indicator of worn bearings which usually means that that engine is toast now some smaller fine silver flakes those could be anything from internal engine wear to transmission teeth being worn out and you should see very little to no deposit whatsoever in the oil it should be just oil there should be no metal flakes or anything in it now the third thing we're going to go over and look at when we're doing our tune-up is the brake. So having brake pad left is important to be able to fully engage the brakes. Running your brake pads beyond the pad to the metal is actually going to wear out your rotor prematurely and you're probably going to end up having to replace both sooner than later and it's going to end up costing you double. So you're better off to just replace the pad a little bit sooner than have to wear it through to the rotor and have to replace both, which the rotor is a lot more expensive than the pads. So we can easily tell how much brake pad is left just by visually inspecting it. We can see here the pad and we can see here the metal backing. You want to replace the pads before they get to the metal backing plate and if it is an older dirt bike it wouldn't hurt to go over and bleed the system and get some fresh brake fluid in there old brake fluid tends to boil over a lot quicker and doesn't have the same properties as fresh fluid so if your fluid boils over you don't have brakes even if you do have good pads and rotors the next thing we're going to check on our tune-up is the chain and the sprocket when you have a worn out chain, it will start to stretch and cause skipping of the gears and you'll actually feel it Well, you'll start to lose powers when you're on hill climbs. And you can feel the chain actually skipping on the teeth of the gear. Now when it's skipping, it's possible that the chain does break and it actually could hurt more of the parts on the bike, such as the stator, the stator cover, or possibly other parts worse. A chain will stretch because the pitch of the chain grows as the chain wears. The growth comes from the bushings wearing the chain pins. Over time, the bushings wear out and the chain pins groove out. A regular looking teeth that are hooked or sharp means that the sprocket is toast when replacing your chain its best bet is to replace both the front and the rear sprocket at the same time as those irregularities will prematurely wear out your new chain doubling repair cost overall so in our case, our chain and sprockets, they're all brand new. So we're just gonna go ahead and make sure our chain's nice and clean. Now when you're lubricating the bike, try not to get it all over the bike. So the next thing we're gonna go over and check is our tires. And there's three things on our tires that we're actually gonna wanna check while we're here. The first thing we're gonna over wanna check is our wheel bearings. Now bad wheel bearings can be felt through a humming vibration in the handlebars. As the problem progresses, it can even turn into a loud audible sound. So you will prematurely wear out your wheel bearings by riding through deep water, mud holes, frequently jumping it, riding on rough terrain, or improperly torquing the rear axle bolt. So to check our wheel bearings, we're just gonna go ahead and put our hands on the wheel and we're gonna feel for any twisting or clicking inside the wheel. 
The wheel should be tight with no play whatsoever. No motion should happen on the rear wheel. Now, the second thing we're gonna go ahead and check on our tires is our spokes. Now, the most common cause for spokes to become loose is uneven tension around the wheel. Now, if your spokes are so loose that they rattle, they're providing virtually no wheel strength to the wheel structure and you're likely to taco a rim or have a bent rim, pinch flat a tire, or destroy something else on your bike. To quickly test if your spokes are tight, run a piece of metal along your spokes like a harp and listen for the different pitches. You can very easily tighten the spokes with a little spoke wrench or a little tiny adjustable spanner wrench. Now I do highly recommend getting a spokes wrench and if you guys want, there'll be one down in the description down below. Now the third thing we're gonna talk about is air pressures in your tires. Now having the perfect air pressure for your riding style and terrain is gonna give you the most amount of grip and performance, which is the most important thing because this is the one thing connecting the dirt bike to the ground. So having your tire pressure set is key. Now generally speaking, a traditional dirt bike tire is ran between six to 18 PSI, with most riders running it at around 12 PSI. Here are some of the benefits of higher tire pressure. It can protect the rim from impacts on rocks. It can be great for heavier riders as well. Now here's some of the benefits of lower tire pressure. You're gonna get better traction. It's great for lightweight riders, and it's ideal for loose track surfaces. Now here's a couple factors that might affect your tire pressure. The different types of tires that are used, such as tubeless, those are gonna have different PSI compared to something that's tubed. The rider's weight, as mentioned, what kind of terrain you're riding on, MX, rocks, grass, dirt, sand, and then rider's preference. Do you like a sticky tire that's soft but susceptible to punctures or pinch flats, or do you like riding with something really tough and rock hard? So I do recommend you guys getting like a nice little tire gauge so you guys can quickly read your PSIs on the trail, as well as one of these portable USB air pumps that they're great if you do get a flat on the trail you can pump your tire up they're usb charged and you can pump your tire up multiple times to get it back if you need to limp it back to the truck so our next major component we're looking at is the suspension so when we're looking at the suspension we're going to want to look around the fork seals on the front and on the rear shock and we're going to look for the the o-ring not to be cracked or have any oil leaking out if your fork seals are leaking best bet is just to replace them now here are a couple extras you should go over and replace or check at least while you're in here doing your own bike tune-up spark plugs grips replace any lost nuts or bolts. I strongly recommend doing a nut and bolt check over the bike just to make sure all the nuts and bolts that are still in the bike and aren't gonna fall out on you on the next ride. And other than that, everything should be ready to rip on your bike. Your bike should be ready to go. That is the dirt bike DIY tune-up. You didn't have to take your bike to the shop. You just fixed everything you need to do in home at your house. So if you guys learned how to do it yourself, make sure you guys click like down below. Click subscribe if this helped you out. Leave me any comments if you guys have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.